Hello friends and welcome to this video. Today I feel like drawing a castle tower and that's gonna be the foundation for a castle that we will be building in future videos. So I like everything that is medieval and uh, I think it will be a cool project to practice and uh, so I'm gonna just get started. I haven't done this uh, previously so I'm just gonna be improvising and I'm gonna try to go you know as slow as possible uh, so you can easily follow this tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a few layers. So layer, enter, so the command line. And uh, I'm gonna create a new layer that I'm gonna call, you know, lines. And I'm gonna make the color of this layer red. Then I'm gonna create another layer. We're gonna call it, um, let's see, tower or main tower and we're gonna color that blue and uh, another one I'm gonna call others for now and I'm gonna change this color to purple okay gonna make the lines layer active and now we're ready to draw so if you're not in, in 3d mode just remember to switch by going here to the wheel and pressing 3D modeling. So the first thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna draw a circle, so C, enter. And this is gonna be the base of the tower, so, and I'm gonna make a 100 units circle. Okay, it's kinda higher, so I have to zoom out. Okay. Now I'm gonna draw another circle, C, enter. And it's gonna be starting from the center of the previous one, and it's gonna be 80 units. So what I'm trying to do here is defining the, the thickness of my walls, okay? All right, so the next thing uh, is creating the little spikes on top of the tower. So we are drawing the tower from the top, and the top is the one that has the most detail, because I'm gonna orbit here it has on top those uh, you know squares and on the bottom it also has supports so we're going to be creating that on in 2d first and then we're going to extrude or pull out uh, those uh, rectangles which uh, to create our structure okay so to draw the spikes on top i'm going to go to the top view first okay i'm going to draw a line and i'm going to make sure i'm in the layer I'm gonna go to the layers lines. L enter, and I'm gonna do it from the center point all the way down here. Okay. I'm gonna switch back to the layer main. Let's see. I'm gonna actually go to the others layer, make it active. And I'm gonna draw the spike here. So to do that, uh, I'm gonna do L enter. I'm gonna go from the intersection so shift right click intersection here i'm gonna go 10 units actually let's do 20 units up okay and then here on the left i'm gonna go 10 units okay and then from here 10 units okay then i'm gonna do l enter i'm gonna go back to the intersection but this time it's gonna be here this intersection here and um, and I'm gonna go 25 units here and 25 units here. Okay, I'm doing this uh, so our spike is perfectly aligned. And now L enter, I'm gonna close the line from here, press my ortho off. Okay, and spacebar again. There you go. Okay, so now I want to trim the excess or so trim. I'm gonna select all this, so they are all my cutting planes. And I'm gonna cut this, this. Let's see. What are the things that I can cut? This and this. I can also cut this, perfect. And of course I wanna to get rid of this. And this. So that is the spike. I'm gonna leave this in standby for now because the next thing we need to draw 
is actually the supports of the top of the tower. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go back here. Actually, let me go back to this area here. So I'm gonna draw another line. This time, let me switch to my red lines layer. I'll enter. I'm gonna draw another line, F8. And this time, we're gonna work on this side of the circle. So here, what I need to do is create a rectangle, another rectangle. So I'm gonna go ahead and change to my other layer because I want that to be in purple. Okay, and then L enter, and I'm using intersection a lot, so it will make sense for me to go here and uh, enable it here, intersection, so I don't have to shift right click all the time. Okay, so L enter again here intersection, and I'm gonna make it. Let's see. Let's make it maybe I don't know, 20. Yeah, let's make it 20. 20 enter. And uh, again here, this side, 20 enter. Okay. And actually 20 seems too big. It's bigger than the spike. So I'm gonna re cancel that. So Control Z. And we're gonna make it 10. So I'm gonna go here, 10. Enter, 10, enter. Okay, and then I'm just gonna throw them here. And I'm gonna draw a line here. Okay, now I'm just gonna draw a line from here to here. Okay, I'm gonna work with quick trim here to remove the accident. Okay, and I have my rectangle that is gonna be part of the support. Before I finish with this rectangle, I want to join the lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and click join. And then I'm gonna join this guy, this guy, oops, this line, and of course, this one, and this one, and press enter. Now it's a single part. I also want to stream, get rid of this center line here. Okay, because it may get on the way. Oh, and this one too. Let's go trim. Okay. All right. So now I'm changing my perspective using the orbit command. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna press or click press pull. Select my rectangle. I'm gonna go down minus 10 units. So it goes to uh, down in the Y axis. Okay, and now because this is a press pull object, I need to use extrude to extrude it again. So I'm gonna change my perspective so I can see the bottom face. And I'm gonna press control and hold the control key to choose the face that is facing down. I press enter and now I'm gonna go 10 units down. So 10, enter, and that's it. So I have now two boxes of the same height. To see things better here, I'm gonna switch from uh, 2D wireframe mode to conceptual mode. And then I'm gonna orbit, okay, this way. And uh, I'm gonna go where it says solid, the solid tab. I'm gonna click on chamfer. So the edge is gonna be this one, the bottom edge. And then I'm gonna type on the distance parameter of the chamfer command. And the distance, since my cube is 10 units high, I'm gonna make it 9.5, the first distance of the chamfer. And the second distance is also gonna be 9.5. So it will give me that uh, look that we want. We press enter again, enter again, and that's it. So you see now that looks like the supports we are looking for. Now that we have our support, it's time to create our wall. And you can do this in different order, uh, but uh, in a different order, but it will you know, give you more work depending on how you do it. So the easiest way to, that I think to do it now is to first start with the wall. So I'm gonna go here and pull up and see, I'm gonna have to press control, I mean shift. I'm gonna shift, 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 shift because we want the whole wall to go up. Press enter and then we're gonna bring it up 40 units. So I'm gonna put 40 enter, okay? Good. Now, the next thing I want to do is we are going to polar array 
this support. So let's go here to the polar array command. I'm gonna blue, see, and now because I have this in the way, uh, this is getting me a little, it's getting a little more difficult to do the polar array. So polar array, I'm gonna select this and this, enter. And the center point is gonna be right here, okay? And I'm gonna choose 12 because you know it's good to have many many supports before the command you know execute you can just orbit and see how it looks it's looking pretty good so i'm gonna enter and enter again okay that's good the next thing is i want my spikes so my spikes are here uh, so i'm gonna go rotate here and i'm gonna use my uh, center line here to guide me to and find my spike which is here okay and i'm gonna gonna do is i'm gonna click on press pull again but it's gonna be this uh, area and i'm gonna press pull it another 40 units 40 enter okay so let's see how that looks okay that looks pretty good uh, and i'm gonna do an array of that too so uh, i'm gonna click on let's see array i'm gonna select this enter my center is going to be the usual center and I think six uh, repetitions of the spike is good but you can have more or less depending on how you want it you want to squeeze seven there let's see how it looks with seven yeah seven it looks good with seven so I'm going to leave it like that enter enter okay and you can see now we already have our top uh, of our tower with supports and the spikes so the next step is to create the lower part of the tower. For that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, 3D rotate this first. I'm gonna use the orbit command and we need to extend, press pull or extrude this circle here. For that, uh, I'm gonna turn off some of the layers that are on the way. So I press layer enter and make the uh, lines layer active and turn off the other ones. Okay. And now uh, I'm gonna click on press pull and I'm gonna select the inner circle. I want this to be the ceiling. You see it's a solid object, it's not uh, empty inside. So this will be the ceiling. And I'm gonna make the ceiling maybe, let's say 10 units, then enter. And uh, that created the ceiling up. So I'm, let's undo that first. It has to be minus. So press pull, press here, enter, and then minus 10, minus 10, enter. And now I have my ceiling, okay? Of the tower later on i can open a hole here to to make uh, stairs come up etc etc for now uh, let's leave it at that so i place that uh, base in the wrong layer in the lines layer so what i want to do is i want to create a new layer i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna call it a uh, tower base and i'm gonna give it a different color Just put it, make it cyan and now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on that version here and I'm gonna move it to my base tower there you go okay next I'm gonna go to the top I'm gonna turn off again that layer that I just created because I don't want to see it and uh, now I'm gonna create another circle see enter okay and uh, let me see I'm yes I'm in the line the line layer is active so and it's gonna be from the center point. So C enter and the center point. Uh, the inner circle is 80, so I'm gonna make this one 60. And again, I'm creating the inner walls. Uh, after that, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use my orbit command and I'm gonna use press pull, press pull, and select this area and I'm gonna pull this area down. Now, uh, how far we go is really depends on us. I'm just gonna make it a guesstimation. I'm just gonna go all the way here, Let me, maybe. And I'm just gonna click. Okay, and we have created our base. Now, if we wanna see how it's looking all together, uh, what I'm gonna do is press on the layers again, turn on the rest of the layers. Okay, and it's looking pretty good. Uh, okay. 
If I orbit, I'll see that my cylinder is empty here all the way to the ceiling of the uh, tower and later on we're gonna open a hole here if we want for the stairs. Now the next step is to create windows and then eventually we're gonna also create a door. So to create our windows, I'm gonna go to the left view so we have a, you know, an idea of the dimensions. And now I'm gonna click on the coordinate system and I'm gonna click on the view UCS, so the plane aligns with my current view. And now I'm going to you know, make the window here. Uh, again, the measurements are just gonna be estimations. Uh, you can use really and make the windows bigger or smaller, depends on your liking and also on the size that you created the tower itself. So I'm gonna press L, enter. I'm gonna create a line here. It's gonna be maybe, let's make this uh, maybe a 35, 35. And then up we're gonna go maybe 50. Okay, 35 and then 50. And um, I want to call a circle here, circle from the midpoint to this end. And let's start zooming in. Okay, and I want this windows to, to, to have a frame and it's important because if you do it without a frame you know the window may not be so noticeable when you put it on top of the tower uh, but if you do it with a frame not only it will stand out but also you will be able to add a different material to it when you render the project so l enter i'm going to this endpoint you know while i'm pulling and looking at my dynamic input I have ortho on and this is like 14, 14 seems too much. So I'm gonna do it probably around, may, maybe let's make a six, a six, seven maybe. So I press seven, enter, okay. And then I do the same here, seven, enter. Spacebar to go back and forward from the line command, seven, enter, spacebar two times, seven, enter, spacebar. And now spacebar again, I'm joining these lines, spacebar, spacebar. Okay, now I need another circle, so C, enter, center point is going to be the same, but the edges are going to be these endpoints. Okay, good. So now I need to line enter because we need to go down here. So I'm going to go, oops, I'm still in the circle command, so escape, L, enter. And I'm going to go eight units, okay, spacebar, eight units. Eight units, spacebar. I really didn't need that uh, extra line there, but I did it, so it's fine. There you go. So I can delete this too. Okay, and I'm gonna use my trim command. Trim enter. Select everything as my coding plane because I need to remove those uh, extra lines that I have on the way. This goes away, this goes away. Okay, so this is gonna take this manually out. And that's it, I have my window. Now the last step is to do a join. So I'm gonna join. And I'm gonna select everything <laughs> and press enter. And now this is a single or two pieces. So this next step is very important. And what we need to do is, well, first I'm gonna orbit to give myself some perspective. I need to press pull both areas, not only the frame, but also the inner, because if I extrude only or press pull only the frame, then I'm gonna get a hole here and it's gonna be very difficult to then, uh, you know, press pull this to create a hole that we want. So I'm gonna go here to press pull I'm gonna press pull this area and I'm gonna make it eight, but you can make it any uh, width that you want. Okay, and then I'm gonna click on the center and I'm gonna press pull up, you know, just any any amount. So I'm just gonna press it like this. The next step is, I'm gonna zoom out. By the way, this uh, I am in the lines layer and I'll notice that my uh, main tower is also in the lines layer. So I want to change it and put it where it belongs, which is the tower base. Okay. And uh, I want to change this and put it in the others layer. 
okay? Okay, so once I have done that, uh, I want to go back to the, put this UCS in war, UCS war, and now I can go to top view. And here I'm gonna make a circle, so a little distance from this, and it's gonna be 80 units of radius, which is matching the radius of my tower. And now I'm gonna click on move, okay, I'm gonna select my window. Now when I select in the window, I had to orbit because I want to grab it exactly by this middle point here. So I'm going to go middle point, okay, and then press ortho off, F8, let's get it on the way. And uh, I'm going to select on the quadrant, shift right click quadrant, okay, good, and that's exactly how I wanted it. Now the next thing is I'm going to select the polar array command, so polar array. I'm selecting the window, enter, and the polar array center is gonna be here. I'm gonna have four windows instead of six, which is the default. You can put more or less windows depending how you like it, enter, enter. And uh, last but not least, I'm gonna make a copy of this because I'm gonna have two rows or maybe three uh, of windows in my tower. So press enter, I'm gonna, I want the center point to be, oops mistake there so let's do that again copy okay select all these objects enter this is the center point one and let's have a third one just in case now that we have the, the this uh, polar array of windows uh, the next step is to put place them in the tower to make this thing uh, this procedure easier what I want to do is I want to have my grid uh, align to the base of the tower. So for that I'm gonna click on my origin here and I'm gonna move it okay and I'm gonna move it here so it attaches to the center and uh, I need to rotate the z-axis too. I'm gonna press F8 so I have ortho and that's it. So I, I have the Grid aligned to the base of the tower, and the next step is to, you know, click move, enter. I'm gonna click this one, this array first, enter. I'm gonna grab it by the center. Press F8, so turn auto off, and I'm gonna snap it here to the center point. Good. So that's the first array of windows. If I click on it. I have this nice arrow, arrow system that I can use, so I'm going to use it to move it up, so I click it and I'm going to move it up, you can put it the height that you want, I'm just going to put it somewhere around here, and now you have to repeat the procedure okay, for the next one, so move, enter, oops, move, enter, I select this, enter, select the center of the circle and I'm going to snap it here. Enter, then I click on the array and select, click on the arrow and I'm going to just go maybe around here. Okay, good. The next step is to extrude uh, these windows so they create holes on my tower walls. Uh, so to do that first I have to explode the array because right now I can only select the entire array when I click on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on explode, enter, and I'm going to select my two arrays and I'm going to click on enter. Now I can individually select each of them. Now I press on the extrude command and I'm going to also click and hold the control key to select the right face, which is going to be the face of where the hole should be on the window. Okay, and then press enter and I can move this all the way to the right. I'm going to repeat this procedure for the other windows, so control, enter, and then all the way, and then let's put it here, extrude, control this, enter, pull it up, and then extrude, control, this is the right face, enter, and then pull it. Okay, now that I have done this, 
And the next step is to just intersect or actually subtract uh, this extra uh, solids I created to create the holes on the tower. So now I can just begin subtracting. Uh, I'm gonna do it one by one, one window by one. So I'm gonna click on subtract. I click on the cylinder enter and then I click on this enter. Okay, and you can see that now the hole has been opened. And to remove this, I just click on that and click on the delete key. And you see that that's the hole has been created. Uh, I'm gonna do the same for the rest. So I'm gonna click here, the, cube, uh, the cylinder, okay, then this, enter. And then I'm gonna do it again. Subtract, cylinder, enter, this, enter. And then subtract, cylinder, enter, and this, enter. And now if I delete this, Oops, this, this one didn't work. So let's try that again. Uh, oops, I pressed the wrong one. Then subtract, enter, and then I'm gonna press enter. Okay, so uh, all I have to do now is click on these guys here. I'm gonna rotate. I have only one left. And that's it. You see that now uh, I have my perfect holes on the windows of the uh, tower. And uh, we are practically almost done. So our tower is looking really good. It has uh, a good amount of detail. There are some things that are missing that I think about adding in the next video. Uh, for now, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm gonna leave it here. And in the next video, I will be adding things like a way to access the roof of the tower. Also gonna add a floor since it's empty now. And I also may add a staircase inside, a door to access the um, tower. I may also create additional towers and connected to a castle and uh, uh, different things. Uh, I also have plans to apply materials to the tower and the castle and render it so you will see a final product. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe, support my channel, Le please I welcome all your comments and thank you so, so much for watching. Stay tuned for the next video on the series and again I see you in the next video.